uh, our next uh, presenter is, and so uh, sorry if I mispronounce, uh, Maria Angeles Velilla Sanchez. I think it's okay. It's fine. That's, That's right? perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, so she recently, let me talk a little bit about her. Uh, she recently presented her PhD dissertation in English Applied Linguistics. Uh, her main research interests are the study of English as a lingua franca, pragmatics, internalization, and languages practices of English as medium of instruction in tertiary academic settings. She also holds teaching duties at the Faculty of Education at the University of Zaragoza in Spain, right? Okay. Can I just ask something before you present? So you presented, this means that you became a doctor, right? Yeah, I am a doctor now. I can I can say that now. Okay, congrats. <laughs> thank you. And well, thank you very much, uh, Ferit and Joanna, for inviting me and my colleagues to to this uh, fantastic webinar. So um, I will first share my screen with you. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, can you say it? Is it is it um, um, visible? Yeah, everything is fine. Okay, All right. Great. Okay. Fine. So, um, the title of my presentation today it's a collaborative dialogue between language and content teachers to improve English medium instruction. And um, in this presentation, I will um, continue with the idea of internationalization and uh, mainly regarding uh, language policy and practices. I will uh, focus on English as a medium of instruction courses, and I will try to build bridges between uh, English as a medium of instruction and English as a lingua franca paradigms. I will briefly explain my own research, which um, intertwines these two paradigms. I will share with you uh, the results of it, um, the pedagogical implications and, and, and some proposals that I have derived from it. And then I will um, finally share with you some concluded remarks. So, um, as we have been uh, talking about, as part of internationalization policies, there has been an increase in the provision of courses uh, in English as a medium of instruction in European universities, as English is considered a fundamental skill for mobility and employability. And in fact, uh, I will continue with the idea of internationalization using Knight's definition of it, uh, focusing on the teaching learning scenarios. He defines it as the process of integrating an international, intercultural and global dimension into the objectives and teaching learning, research and service functions of a university or higher education system. So, um, um, my point today is that despite the existence of um, internationalization policies issued by central organisms such as the European Union, um, much more is needed to um, arrive to practitioners' interventions and practices. And um, talking about policies, um, um, we can consider that language education policies require a profound understanding, first of all, of the interconnections between languages available in a country. Um, this, uh, uh, this is just the first point. Then the educational jurisdictions or the speech community where these language education uh, policies are applied. And um, uh, my focus today, the actors who may shape those interconnections. In Spolsky's words, this um, is the intervention, uh, the planning, the management uh, to regulate the language practices in a specific uh, institution, the beliefs or ideology, um, this means the constructions um, concerning language, and um, uh, most um, importantly in my case the practices the real communicative situations so um moving on um uh, emi programs english as a medium of instruction programs 
Um, they are quite recent in most of the countries worldwide and there is a limited experience and understanding of the implication of teaching through English. Okay, teaching through English. And uh, research has demonstrated the teacher's dissatisfaction with the quality of support their um, education institutions offer when faced with the many challenges that EMI poses. One of such challenges, and um, it's the challenge that I'm going to uh, devote my time today, it's that of um, um, the EMI teacher's role regarding language issues. This is a crucial matter uh, as the vast majority of EMI lectures in Europe are non-native uh, speakers of the language. They um, most of the times are specialists in their field, but they are not um, um, language experts. And the fact is that English as a medium of instruction teachers are supposed to master the English language, to have the knowledge, the know-how um, and also the ability of teaching a particular subject uh, content through the medium of a language which is usually not their uh, L1. So um, last, but, last but not least, they are meant to understand uh, the challenges of teaching content uh, through a language different also from uh, the majority of the students uh, present in the classroom. So uh, at this point, higher education institutions need to address uh, the complex uh, reality of English as a medium of instruction uh, in order to achieve high standards of quality, both at local and international levels. Therefore, I consider that um, collaboration between language and content teachers is necessary to make EMI lectures, uh, lecturers more aware of the importance of, of language in content language. And um, measures such as the inclusion of training programs to instructors in English as a, as a medium of instruction programs may contribute to improving uh, these lectures input during these these lectures. Um, moving on to um, this issue that I have just uh, commented, um, which variety of English should be taught in an EMI course? This is a question that um, I, I, I pose here. Uh, there is no um, a single answer, but um, many researchers have um, um, been carrying out um, research on uh, teaching through English from the perspective of English as a lingua franca. We can define this concept as the use of English amongst multilingual interlocutors. We've been talking about multilingual um, and well, the different terminology that Anna very well has explained. So in this case, the use of English amongst multilingual interlocutors who use common languages uh, English and who usually communicate in a country or area in which English is not used in daily life. So um, the point made by these uh, researchers is that um, as long as comprehensibility um, or intelligibility is not affected, then uh, English from, the, from this perspective is a perfectly acceptable way of communicating this regarding the speaker's standardness, non-standardness, and, and it, is, uh, it, it might be welcomed by the lecturers. Moving on to my own research, uh, which I have said intertwines English as a medium of instruction or focuses on English as a medium of instruction from the perspective of English as a lingua franca. I have um, uh, studied two different English as a medium of instruction teaching and learning scenarios at the University of Zaragoza in Spain, which are the bachelor's degree in business administration and the master's degree in nanostructured materials for nanotechnology applications. These uh, two settings were considered as ELF settings, English as a lingua franca settings, since they involve participants, you can see it here, 
um, um, who have different lingua cultural backgrounds and who use English um, for instruction in a Spanish monolingual, typically, uh, typically monolingual university. The study that I conducted um, looked at the micro level of pragmatic strategies, pragmatic choices lecturers make um, during their EMI discourse. Secondly, the functions they perform in that in that uh, uh, communication, and um, most importantly, the way meaning is generated inside those um, lessons, inside those classrooms. In order to fulfill this research, uh, this course pragmatic approach was was used to analyze these pragmatic strategies. And uh, I also integrated an, an, an ethnographically oriented methodology based on semi-structured interviews with these lecturers in order to um, uh, gain um, understanding of their own insights um, uh, on the use of these pragmatic strategies. Let me share with you briefly the results of this um, investigation. Um, the main finding um, were 13 pragmatic strategies uh, used by the participants in these different EMI courses to fulfill uh, the purposes of achieving communication effectiveness. This is a total of 736 occurrences of strategies in both um, subcorpora collected. And these strategies were grouped into broader categories, which are the ones that we can see in this chart. Uh, first of all, explicitness strategies. Secondly, repairing strategies. Thirdly, multilingual resources, clarification strategies, and uh, lastly, focus on, on form. The um, explicitness, repairing, and multilingual strategies have the highest number of occurrences and therefore waste in the lecturer's usage of these uh, pragmatic um, strategies. And um, I would like you to uh, contextualize this and to understand these results um, in light of um, the um, role played by discursive, uh, discursively developing conventions of EMI lecturing. Uh, secondly, the, characteri the characteristics of the participants involved. And thirdly, the context where uh, these lectures took place. Just um, um, as a brief summary, the participants involved uh, had different commands of English different nationalities. The lectures recorded uh, reflected different types of lecture student interactions, uh, but mainly uh, in both degrees, um, a monologic type of um, lecture um, was, was present. And um, there were also different perspectives on the part of the lecturers towards uh, teaching EMI and these uh, differences included, for example, their vision of uh, using different languages um, um, apart from English, um, code switching. These um, results that I have briefly summarized um, lead me to think about some uh, pedagogical impl implications and proposals to improve EMI instruction in my uh, uh, um, university, but I think it might be extended to other, to other universities or institutions. First of all, I consider that these results might be useful to explain the hybridity and flexibility of uh, the English language in multilingual society, societies and most precisely in EMI settings, English as a medium of instruction context. In other words, these um, results might be useful to make English as a, a medium of instruction teachers ELF aware. And secondly, these results might be useful to actually teach um, how to use pragmatic strategies um, in um, inter intercultural or multilingual classrooms, uh, what the functions of these strategies could be and, and how they actually um, are realized or might be realized. 
And I considered that um, there are three areas in which these pragmatic strategies can be of help. These are content, language, and engagement with the audience. First one, um, content. Um, um, I think, first of all, that um, teaching strategies might be of great help to ex uh, increase explicitness. Uh, and in order to achieve these strategies, such as reformulation of unclear utterances or big concepts, might be might be used. Similarly, I think that lecturers uh, need to use redundancy of ideas in order to highlight importance and uh, to provide less dense discourse um, in order also to not to make the, the lecture so monologic um, and, um, and to, to, to be um, uh, more precise. And um, also comprehension checks, checking for comprehension on the part of the students might get to ensure the, um, um, that the students are successfully following the explanations uh, provided. But something that I um, get to observe um, along the data is that these lectures didn't um, get or didn't allow the students time enough to um, prompt the misunderstood item. So uh, I think that uh, comprehension checks um, go along with um, enough time to prompt the misunderstood uh, element. In order to um, exemplify these ideas, I will share with you one of the excerpts that I transcribed in my in my research, and it is an example of a reformulation strategy that uh, one of the lecturers used. So in this case, um, the lecturer is talking about techniques, and he reformulates and he says we can use some kind of techniques, some kind of formulas. We can apply some kind of formula. And then um, he talks about uh, this error can be quantified. We can calculate it, this error. So he's um, um, repeating the same idea. He's highlighting um, um, explicitness. And, and I think he has achieved uh, the purpose of um, simplifying the explanation to the students. Moving on to language. Um, in order to, I don't know, to simplify the, the utterances or just to gain accuracy of expression, um, a strategy such as self-repetition or defining a concept might be of, of help. Also, um, and in order to break this, this monologue, uh, co-construction of understanding with the students uh, would be needed. And I am talking about interactive communication with them. Um, if we if we if we uh, pay attention to these strategies, such as asking for repetition or a clarification request, might be used. And um, finally, um, lecturers can also use vocabulary items that the rest of the group will be familiar with, or even devote some time to specialized terminology, and that is new for the students. And I have called it focus on form. In order to exemplify this strategy focus on form, um, um, you can see here another excerpt in which the lecturer is explaining the term R. R stands for random in this in this context, marketing context um, at the um, economics faculty. And uh, he explains it and he highlights importance of this term. Why is R? Um, how we say how would we say it's random in English? random, they laugh um, and they uh, make a joke. And um, he says in Spanish, aleatorio. So in Spanish, it would be an A, but in English it's an R. So um, um, he not only he didn't um, uh, he did not only um, highlight the, the idea of, of R standing for random, but also he translated the, the term and he um, encouraged the student to, to reply this question. How do we say random in English? Random. So he made the connection between the um, term in, in English and, and, and Spanish. 
Finally, um, uh, engagement uh, with the audience. Um, um, I think this is for me one of the most important aspects. Researchers such as Morel uh, point out that interpersonal relations uh, are a cornerstone in the non-native speaker's willingness to communicate uh, even more inside the classroom. Um, however, research has also found, uh, and my own research has um, put it forward, that EMI courses mainly tend to adopt a lecture lecture format with a dominant teacher-led style and um, mostly monologic. So I propose that in order to change this, um, there is a need to use pragmatic strategies that involve interaction and, and solidarity with the students. Um, some of those uh, might be clarification strategies in order to negotiate meaning and to foster interaction also, uh, lecturers might get to use their own multilingual resources and most importantly, the, the shared languages among the participants in the, in the lecture. These might contribute um, to gain lexical richness, uh, discourse flexibility and um, engagement rapport among the lecturers and the audience. And um, given the case that code switching multilingual resources might not be enough, um, they can use more than one pragmatic strategy at a time. Um, this might be code switching and reformulation or code switching and defining of a term in order to ensure the understanding of every participant in a lecture, regardless of their linguistic backgrounds. This is the uh, final example that I will share with you, and it's that of the strategy literal translation. In this case, this lecture is talking about outlayers, uh, another marketing term. And um, first of all, he asked for um, understanding. Do you understand outlayer? Have you ever used? Uh, well, sorry, you always speak English. They, they make a joke because they are seem to be used to, to speak in English. Then he um, um, defines the um, term in English for an extreme value in a series of an uh, extreme value is an outlayer. In English and Spanish, he points out that they are going to use um, um, uh, this term, uh, whether they are speaking in Spanish or in English. And then he uh, code switches or he literally translates it uh, into Spanish, un valor extremo, un valor extraño. So, uh, as you can see here, more than one strategy has um, been put into practice to achieve understanding. And I consider that uh, it, they were all useful for the purpose of it. So, um, in order to conclude, um, it's true that pragmatic strategies are highly contextual and used in situated and strategic interaction. But I consider that EMI lectures might or can be trained on, on how to use them um, so as to, first of all, overcome communication problems. Secondly, to compensate for language diversity in the class. And thirdly, uh, to achieve more teaching flexibility in these lectures, to break with uh, monotonous lectures and with um, 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 teacher-led uh, kind of um, lecturing style. And even um, English is the medium of instruction in, this, in these lectures. Lectures should be taught or might be taught uh, to deploy pragmatic strategies, not only using English, but drawing on their lingua cultural repertoires in order to achieve successful communication and also, of course, the desirable teaching purposes. As um, my uh, colleague Anna has, uh, has done before, uh, I can share with you my, my references, the, the articles that I used for this presentation. Please uh, email me at this um, 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 email address if, if you need 
any further um, details. Um, and thank you very much for listening, for coming to this uh, webinar. And thank you very much for Ethan and, and Joanna for inviting me to this fantastic webinar. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Marianne. Uh, by the way, uh, Anna told us that you know you are called Marianne. Okay. Marianne. Uh, Marianne. Uh, Marianne. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, informative presentation and, of course, uh, detailed you know discussions of the findings. And I'm just checking the chat box. Um, uh, if you would like to ask your questions. Uh, regarding, you know, uh, English medium instruction. Uh, could you please, uh, Marianne, keep the, uh, you know, last slide on the screen? Maybe, you know, of some, of, yeah, some of the audience might be interested in your email address. Yeah. To ask, you know, further questions. Okay. Uh, can I ask you a question regarding uh, English medium instruction? Uh, it would be a kind of opinion question, uh, actually. Uh, maybe not directly your presentation, but uh, you know that uh, in most uh, countries, so Turkey might be uh, considered one of these. Um, at several universities, the medium of instruction is English in Turkey. Uh, you know, there are certain universities and they provide, you know, the instruction uh, completely in English, no matter what the subject is. Uh, this might be history, this might be geography, and this might be uh, teacher training programs. Uh, I would like to learn about your opinion. Yeah, do you think that we are doing this because this is the only way that we can achieve, you know, high learner proficiency in English? Because we cannot do, you know, or we cannot increase or we cannot improve our uh, learners proficiency uh, during the uh, secondary schools. I don't know, what, what's your opinion about that? Well, uh, that's an aspect that I um, um, I asked the lecturers in my study yeah. and some of them um, um, believed that um, the input that they provided in the English language uh, was very much of help uh, to improve, actually improve the uh, students' communicative skills in English. Um, that surprises, su surprisingly was just um, an opinion of the lecturers in the bachelor's degree. Um, that was not shared by the uh, master's degree lecturers because in the master's degree they consider the students as highly uh, skilled uh, students in English. So um, I might say that uh, depending on the level, depending on the kind of students, the profile of uh, those students and um, the um, way you marketize those courses. Uh, if you, if you um, uh, promote um, learning languages as much as learning content, uh, that's uh, not only English as a medium of instruction as, as regards content. And that's perfectly, um, uh, mm, but that we can carry out instruction in which you can focus on content and on language. In these specific cases that I analyzed, um, learning English was something additional, additional. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm still checking the chat box. Uh, so you can also ask your questions if you have, you know, questions on your mind. So you can also ask your questions, you know, raising your hands, and then uh, we can uh, unmute you so that you can ask your questions. Okay, um, Joanna, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm yes. here. <laughs> okay. I'm still here. Thank you, uh, Maria and Helles. Um, uh, it was really a great presentation. Um, uh, it, it shows the, the complexity, to be honest, of, of uh, in English language teaching nowadays and uh, so many issues that we still have to cope with. 
So thank you very much because um, uh, it it greatly corresponds also with our first presentation. So so thank you very much for accepting our our, our invitation. Um, and uh, of course, if any of our uh, participants uh, have any uh, questions or comments, um, uh, you still have a chance to, to write them or, or write to, to, to our uh, great contributor. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All, right. All right, Maria, thank you so much again for the presentation. I think there are no further questions, so which means that you have explained everything in detail. So I hope there, so. <laughs> yeah, there are no questions left. <laughs> thank you. Okay. All right, so now I'm stopping the recording.